Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull punches here. This stuff is tough. Okay, you know, and and my son was doing a calculus class and he asked me to help him with his understanding uh, integration and understanding the area of the curve and I'm like, oh, it's easy to do this. And they said, oh, we have to do it with the summation notation. I'm like, well, I understand what that is, but I want you to sit down and really do it. It's it's not easy. Okay, it's well, it's not hard. Okay, it is hard. Okay, let's just do it. Okay, so here I have some uh, function f of x. Actually, let's use this. I picked something f of x equals 3x squared plus 2. And I want to find the area from 1 to 2. And I picked something that was a little bit uh, more difficult than normal. Just to, if, if you can do this, you can understand the rest of the stuff too. Okay, But it's not so complicated that you end up with like giant pages of math, even though that may happen too. Uh, and, and let me say something about area under of a curve. I mean, what the heck, why would you even care? There's actually three ways to do this. There's uh, summation. Um, I'll just put some, that's, that's, there's sigma, summation. There's the antiderivative. And I've talked about that in a previous video. And, and the idea that a derivative is related to area under a curve does kind of blow my mind. And I still don't really fully make that connection, but I can do it. And uh, But there's that. And then finally, we can do this numerically with Python. Numerically. And and this is really cool, and I'll make a video on that one. I'll do the same problem three different ways. One, two, three. Uh, the numerically with Python really gives you a lot of advantages because you don't even need to have an actual function. You can just deal with data. And I think that's super awesome. Okay. So in this case, what we want to do is to find the area under, the, we can't find the area under a curve, but we can find the area for a, a flat function, a rectangle, okay? So if I break this into rectangles, in fact, like this, okay? Then this first rectangle, I'm going to say is this, and then this next one is this, and this next one is this, and then that one. Okay, so here I have four rectangles. If I find the area of these four rectangles and add them up, I'll get an approximation of the area under the curve. As I increase the number of rectangles, it gets closer and closer to that function. If I let take the limit as n goes to infinity, where n is the number of rectangles, then I get the right answer. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So what's the so we're gonna say the area of this, let's call it a, is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of these areas right here. So what's the area of one of these triangles? Well, let's call this uh, xi. And this is gonna be, you know, each one of these are xi's. I'm gonna break them into x's along the way. So if the height of this rectangle right here is f of xi, right? Cause that's, here's the function. And if I put in my x value, I get that height. And then this width right here, we're gonna call, I'm going to call delta x. So that triangle looks like a rectangle, looks like this: delta x by f of x i. Okay, so I need to get an expression for x i. I need to get an expression for delta x. So first, delta x. So if I go from, I can say this: delta x is going to be equal to. It depends on how many pieces I break this up into, right? So this whole width right here, this whole line is. Uh, 2 minus 1 long. It's the final value minus the initial value. So that's where this uh, limits of integration, if you want to think of them, where they come in. They come into this delta x. Okay. Uh, so, and if I divide that by n, then that's how big delta x is. That's it. So this is going to be 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get 1 over n. Delta x is 1 over n. Now, what about xi? So if I start xi is going to be equal to this starting value of one, right? Because that's where I start. And then I'm gonna add delta x. And then the next one I'm gonna add delta x times two. And then I'm gonna add delta x times three. So this is gonna be actually uh, plus delta x times i, right? Where i goes one, two, three, four. So in this case, xi would be one plus i over n. Okay, now that looks easy, but there's a lot of pieces here. And I'm, I made, I've done this more than once. I made a mistake. So mistakes are part of life. Embrace the mistakes. They're your mistakes and they're part of learning. Okay, you're not going to get it right the first time. 
But don't give up either. Don't surrender. Okay, so let's find this f of x i. f of x i, and this is from i equals one to n. We're summing, so we're adding up the areas of all these box n number boxes, and then we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. That's what we're doing. So this is my my definition, and this is finding the value for delta x of something x i. So let's find f of x i. Well, I'm going to take my function f of x, and I'm going to put in this. So I'm going to get three times uh, one plus i over n squared plus two. Now let's just let's just make this a little bit better. So I'm going to say this is three. I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to say one times one plus one times i over n plus i times one over n i over n times one. So I get two i over n, and then I get i over n times i over n. So this is going to be plus i squared over n squared plus two. Okay, so now let's multiply the three out. Don't take as many pieces, break it into many pieces as you want. If you're eating a piece of pizza, you're not gonna shove that whole thing in your mouth, right? Take a bite. This is taking a bite. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna actually do a quick thing here, three times one, but I also have the two, so it's gonna be five. And then I have plus six i over n plus three i squared over n squared. So that's my f of x. Cool? Cool. Okay, now I need to find this f of x delta x. So I'm gonna say f of x i times delta x is gonna be equal to my function that I just wrote right there. So it's gonna be equal to five plus six i over n plus three i squared over n squared times delta i, delta x. And remember, delta x is one over n. One over n. I'm gonna multiply this whole thing out because I, I don't wanna have these crazy things going on. So I'm gonna say this is equal to five over n plus six i over n squared plus three i squared over n cubed. See, I almost made a mistake, caught it. Okay, so now I can put that in to my function area equals the limit as n goes to infinity. Don't try to take shortcuts. You're like, I'm gonna take shortcuts and save paper, and that's just gonna waste paper because you're gonna make a mistake, okay? There's no, there's no shortcut to doing these things. Uh, so it's gonna be the sum from i equals one to infinity, and I'm the worst shortcut taker, I, so I'm to blame, okay? I shouldn't be talking to you like that. I apologize, it's my fault. I'm setting a bad example. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this function in and I get five over n plus six i over n squared plus three i squared over n cubed. Now each one of these is its own sum. So I'm gonna actually write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum over i in, that's not, that's not infinity sum over i equals one to n of five over n, plus the sum, I'm gonna leave that just, they're all the same sums, six i over n squared, plus sum of three i squared over n cubed. Okay, so now let's just treat each of these sums separately. This first one is actually not so bad, so a equals the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, I'm gonna put right there. So I can actually bring this stuff out, right? I can, let's bring out the n, because n doesn't matter, right? N's, I'm not summing n, n doesn't change, it's just a constant. So I'm gonna say one over n times the sum of i equals one to n of five. And same thing over here, I'm gonna bring this stuff out, plus six over n squared times the sum of i plus three over n cubed sum i squared. Okay, so now now we have to look up these summation formulas. Uh, let me write them over here so that, so that we don't forget. So if I have the sum over i equals one to n of a constant, that's just gonna be n times that constant, right? Because you're adding up all these pieces. If I have the sum i equals one to n of i, 
then you know these formulas are kind of tricky. Uh, so n times n plus one over two. That one I can derive. This next one, the sum of i equals one to n of i squared, I forget. It is uh, n times, I'm gonna mess it up. I don't wanna, it's two n plus one, is that right? I don't like making mistakes. I don't like making mistakes in ink. I'm pretty sure it's 2n plus 1, but I'm just really double checking. Here it is. Okay, so it is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all of that over 6. Okay. So those are my formulas that I'm going to use. So this one is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 over n. And then this is just going to be 5 times n. That was easy. Yay. Okay. Plus 6 over n squared. i squared. I mean, that's i. It's going to be this. So it's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. Now, it, it's important to realize I have to do the summations before I take the limit. Okay. I can't take the limit first. I got to do the summations. That's that one. And then this one is going to be 3 over n cubed. It's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay. I'm going to a new piece of paper because you know what? I'm not trying to save paper. It's not about saving paper. It's about doing math. Okay. So I'm going to do it right here and then we'll move it up. Okay. So I have the limit equals the limit as n goes to infinity. And this is going to be 5n over n. That's just going to be 5. That was easy. Okay, now this one, look, I can, I have uh, this n canceled that n. And then I have uh, six times n over n. Actually, this is three, right? So I have three times n over n. So it's just gonna be three. And then I have uh, three over n, because I have that plus one. So plus three over n. Was that too much? I apologize. Okay. Now let's do this one. First of all, I can cancel this and that. I'm just going to write this out. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to write this out. I'm going to say, I'm going to cancel that in. I'm going to cancel the three. So I get uh, one over n squared. And then I have a three. And then I have n plus one, two n plus one. Okay. Now, what do I do? Okay, so I have a third. No, I have a half. That was a mistake. Okay, so I could multiply this out. I should probably do that. Is that what I did before? Yeah, I did that before. Okay, so let's multiply that out. So limit, and I'm just saying I did that before because, you know, I told you I've already made some mistakes. So look, I have five plus three is eight. And then I also, let's go ahead and do this. The limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n is goes to 0, right? Because I'm dividing by a huge number. So that one goes to 0. Now this thing I can't, I have to do. So I can say plus uh, 1 half times 1 over n squared times 2 n squared. And then I'm going to get n and then I can get 2 n. So plus 3 n and then plus 1. Okay, so now if I cancel this stuff, if I divide everything by n squared, those cancel. And this one's gonna be one over n, so that's gonna to go to zero. This is gonna be one over n squared, that goes to zero. So I get eight plus one half, and all I have left is two, so that's gonna be equal to nine. And that, my friends, boom, boom is the answer. Wow, I can't believe I did it. I know that's the answer because I did it another way. So there you go. The area under curve was summation. It, you know, let me re remind you that two things. One, I have trouble with these formulas because th these two I can figure out, but this one I have to look up because I can't remember how to derive that and I don't know. Number two, you get a lot of algebra from this, but the basic idea is easy, right? It's just that the algebra becomes unwieldy. Uh, so, but it's still important to do it at least once so you can understand what's going on. So there you go, area under the curve.
with summation. <laughs>